Check out these two beauties right here. Great big females. We still got 350 traps left to go. You'll see more of these girls later, but let's see what's in the rest of the trap. Good morning and welcome back. We got 400 lobster traps to haul today. It's the first buoy of the day. We have five traps on every buoy. We haul them up five traps at a time. We're gonna get to it and take you through them. There's the nice keeper. That's what we're after right there. Pound and a half, male shedder. Freshly shed, you can see how bright orange the claws are. These are the best eating lobsters on the planet. Nice and sweet compared to a hard shell. A hard shell has real black claws underneath. They don't have nearly as sweet of meat. These shedders are the best. Check that one out. That's a pretty cool one. It's got a little hook on his claw. He must use that to grab fish. We catch lobsters with different shaped claws. Sometimes they'll have two working claws on one knuckle. That one's pretty cool. Female, we got a knot. We're gonna let her go. Let's see how well her little fish hook works. There she goes. Or two every week. I don't know. Yeah, it's consistent. Great big male, nice lobster. He's actually pretty close to being a keeper, but he looks like he's oversized. We have a measure here. They gotta be under five inches from their eye down to the back of their shell. The measure stays up on his back. This one is over five inches. He's actually growing a new claw. Lobsters can regrow their claws, shoot them off like a lizard's tail to distract predators, um, and then they'll regrow new ones through the shedding process. He's growing a new one. It's kind of interesting. He's growing a new crusher claw. Usually they have a crusher and a pincher claw. This one is growing back two crusher claws. He's gonna be a big old double crusher. Pretty cool. This used to be a pincher before he lost it. See on this one, one's a crusher and one's a pincher. One's designed to crush shells, bones, and the other's designed to rip meat, flesh. These ones that are over five inches are protected and made for breeding. They're the best at breeding the females, so we're gonna let him go. We're gonna give him a snack. There he is, holding on with both claws. He's going home to breed some females and make some babies. Future of the fishery right there. So since neither of them have notches, that either means they're not capable of breeding or they just never got caught when they had eggs, so nobody notched them. Could be one or the other, it's hard to say, but either way they're protected. Because they're over five inches, we're gonna give them some notches either way. All you Canadians in here, just skip ahead like 30, 40 seconds here. These lobsters could actually crawl over into Canada very easily where they could be kept. Over there they have different size regulations. They're actually allowed to keep them in Maine over five inches, they're protected. In Canada they are not. However, in Canada they do have the V-notch rule. So we're gonna give these girls notches just in case they are breeders and just in case they do find their way into Canada. All right, welcome back Canadians. Uh, we're just gonna let these go. You can head over to the short form content to see the release of these two big, beautiful mamas. Another nice female there, full of eggs. She's got no notch. We catch quite a few of these a day. It's not uncommon to do 20, 30 notches in a day. There she goes. There's another one with about 10, 15,000 eggs. It's estimated that there's 10,000 eggs per pound. So those lobsters earlier, they're capable of producing 50, 60, 70,000 eggs. Check out that purple crab. That's pretty neat. We see these probably once a month. Pretty cool. Ah. 
I'm gonna use this for like a talking prop, but this is the nastiest apple I've ever seen. I don't even think I can choke this down for a talking prop. Ah, that's a nasty apple. I don't know how long that's been in my lunchbox, but it's been a while. So one of the cool things about the lobster industry is that it's owner operator only. So every boat you see along the coast of Maine, if you travel up the coast, is owned by the operator. So it prevents large fleets from being created and it really promotes small business. So there is no possible way for me to buy four or five, six boats, hire captains, send them out to catch lobsters. So it really incentivizes small business. And anytime you buy a lobster from Maine, you can know that you're supporting a small business and not a huge corporation. Consistently. Catching all kinds of big ones today. Another big one. We got like what, four or five big lobsters today? They have been extra abundant today. Every day is different. That's what kind of makes it fun and enjoyable. Overall, the routine can get pretty tedious without stuff like this mixing it up. So it's fun to see some random stuff pop up in the traps. Here, you can have this. This was nasty. intended to be primarily about oversized lobsters but that's what it's quickly turned into because we keep catching them all day i don't know where they're all headed or where they're all coming from but there's a big run of migrating oversized lobsters coming through the area this one has no notch but she's missing her flipper she's actually growing a whole new flipper so we don't need to freshen it up we don't need to give her a notch she's all ready to go Woo! We've made it to the final 10 of the day. We organized our traps in 10 buoy strings to help keep track of all 800 of them. A lot of people ask how we keep track of all 800 traps. How could you possibly memorize where they all are? Well, there's already five on every buoy, so we only have to keep track of 80 buoys. On top of that, we organize them in strings of 10, so we only have to keep track of 16 strings of 10. We're hauling this 10 a little bit different than the previous 70. This location that we're in are kind of underperforming, so we're actually gonna put all the traps on the boat. We'll put 50 traps on the boat, take them to a different location, set them back out hopefully have better performance out of the traps there. The goal here is to keep as many traps fishing in good locations as possible, move the bad ones to the good ones. In this case, we don't really have many good ones to go to. Everywhere is performing pretty poorly. We're just bored, basically. Nothing better to do. So when everything goes smoothly, it takes us about a half an hour to put 50 traps on. This is the most dangerous time to load on. Appears to be flat calm, and then out of nowhere will come a little random chop. We got them tied down now. So here's the final trap of the day. There's much in it. Looks like there's a few on camera, but both punch tails. These are all short. Crabs. Maybe one keeper. Probably not. Little Jonah crab. Jump. We're headed to the new spot. So after we get to the new spot, they go back out in the exact opposite order that they came in the boat. 